I see you over there. You are struggling, podcaster. You don't want to show up. Maybe you have a cold or a flu or you just lost motivation because you opened your stats and you're like, nobody's listening to me anyways. Why should I show up? Don't stop. That's why you're here. That's why we are having these conversations. And our guest today, I'm going to call her the queen of communication and connection. She shares with us all the tips on how to show up even on those days when we don't have motivation, where we show up where we still inspire others. We show up and in showing up, we inspire ourselves to keep going. And it's on those days when you can learn to communicate and still connect on an inspirational level when you are feeling like trash that you're going to make the biggest impact in the world. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to be perfect, but you do need to learn how to communicate so that you can motivate not only yourself, but those around you. So are you ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Cure for Pod Fade. I am so so excited you found your way here because that means you know how powerful podcasting can be. You are ready to build a legacy with your unique story, your message, and your offer, but you're getting a little overwhelmed. You're feeling frustrated. You're feeling stuck. You just don't know how to grow your show, find a new audience, and make some money. Podcasting can be the ticket to the life of your dreams, and it doesn't have to be as hard as you think. We're talking about all the ingredients it takes to be a successful, profitable podcaster without that icky overwhelm, because you are too magical to join the 85% plus club that pod fades away. I'm your host, Jen Dragonette. So let's make podcasting easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Welcome to the podcast, Valeria. I'm excited because we've been having this like little catch up conversation and I reached out to you because you have such an important message with thriving during crisis and communication, which is two things that podcasters really need. And it's all about communicating and connecting. And I know that is your jam is the, the connection and the communication. So on those bad days that we don't want to communicate, how can we communicate in a way where let's say we show up angry? Mm -hmm. How do we not get that, like, communication isn't something we're taught in school. We need to quit English and go to communication studies, I think, more than English studies, because nobody knows how to communicate. I believe that communication starts with self-communication, right? In that moment, like I was saying, I woke up, I opened my eyes, I was like, oh my God, I don't want to go. I don't even know if this is worth it. I don't know if anybody's listening and so on. So that communication starts with ourselves. And the quality of, of the communication that we have with ourselves determines our actions. If I'm telling myself that what I'm, say, what I'm saying or what I'm doing is not worth it, and I believe it, right? Because we tell the story to ourselves, but do we believe it? That's the, the key point, right? So if I believe it, then I'm going to go and communicate with other people from an emotional point of view or from an emotional state. Let's, let's put it that way. From an emotional state that we get across. Like people will feel it. They might not see it if they're listening to you or writing a podcast. Or if they are seeing the video, they may see the low energy. They may see you're not feeling good. And sometimes that day that you're not feeling good, maybe that's what you need to talk about, right? Like, guys, today I didn't want to come to the station or here to do my podcast. And here I am because I know that what I have to say to you, that what I have to share is important. What's important for me is going to be important for many of you. So I think recognizing number one that we are humans and that what what inspire more people to to yeah. listen to us and to watch what we're doing is our story from our real life right we're tired to see a bunch of influencers on social media saying oh I have the great life and then you go back doors and things that are not showing like a great life right so be more human, right? That's something 
look, with all the artificial intelligence, right? I, I've seen a lot of people creating content now with uh, artificial intelligence. There is some, there is something that nobody can take away from us, which is our emotional intelligence and how we use it to communicate our message. There's no, him, at least that I know, there is no artificial intelligence that can produce emotional intelligence in our message. Communication is a key part of the process. It's something that we need to master and we need to start with the communication that we have with ourselves, so we can have and develop the right communication so we can have uh, uh, we can I, I would say flow because probably that's not the right word but I would say that, that we can have our message to get across to the people that need to listen to it and it started with trust. Communication starts with trust. Trust in ourselves first, and then trust in the other person. Right now, I'm trusting you that we're going to have a great conversation here. I'm trusting the audience, whoever is listening right now. I'm trusting that person is going to get what they need from this, right? Maybe one tip. It might be a, a message. It might be a different perspective. It might be something that change the way that they feel or they change the way that it's, they think. So yeah. I need to trust. And if I trust, then the communication will flow. Cool. And I think for me, the trust part is I have more trust in others than in myself. So I hold back. And I think, I know, I don't think, I know so many people hold back because they don't trust what they know inside. And then the fear of how others will take it shows up. So they silence their message. And that's just really sad. He's being human. He's being human. The difference, right, that makes us thrive during those times is that, okay, so I know that about me. What do I do with that? Do I stay in that feeling? that probably drags me down and with me, everybody that is around me? Or do I use that that I feel to recognize that I'm human, that's part of who I am, and how do I use that to create action? I'm going to give you an example. During crisis, when we started COVID, the COVID season, let's call it away. <laughs> I remember there was a lot of fear around, me included. I had fear. I mean, I have my mom and my dad there. They are, they are if they get COVID, it's going to be really, really bad for them. So probably they would die, right? So I was, I had a lot of fear about, about my, my parents getting sick. And, and I decided, I decided that if I stay in fear, that will get a cross. In my message, as as communicators that we are, right? Either if you do podcasts or a radio show or you're on TV or you write a blog or you train people, doesn't matter what you do. Even if you are a leader, you are a communicator, right? So we have a responsibility with others. So if we stay in fear, that will translate to others, kind of like, oh my God, if this person is in fear, then I have to feel fear because if this person that seems to be that person that we look up is not only feeling fear but expressing fear which is different right feeling is okay i feel it what do i do with that i i either express it or i manage the fear so i decided to start transforming those negative emotions into positive action and for example Every time that fear came up, my goal was to transform that fear into determination. Every time that I, anxiety came up, I decided to transform anxiety into creativity. Oh. So I started kind of looking at what were those emotions, negative emotions that were showing up. 
And in the past, I used to go and see, okay, what is the trigger? And I have to neutralize the trigger so I can feel more steady on my emotion. The truth is that when there are things that are outside your control, it's not that you can neutralize the trigger, right? Like, yeah. I know that if I watch the news, I get a negative emotion. It's easy. I just turn off the TV. I don't watch, I don't watch the news. But when you have things that are external to us, like a crisis or like what happened with COVID or what's going on today in the world, right? Then we cannot have control about that, but we can control how we express what we feel. So we have two choices. One, we stay with the emotion and we express the emotion. So we transfer the emotion, negative emotion to somebody else. So it becomes like a big snowball that becomes bigger, bigger, and bigger. Or we recognize, okay, what I'm feeling is fear. So what do I want to do with this fear? So I transform this negative emotion into a positive action that creates action instead of reaction. And that probably is one of the hardest things that I had to do for myself. So I know that it's not easy and requires a lot of self-discovery to be able to do it and courage. Because once you start feeling something that is really comfortable, and for a lot of people, fear, anxiety, or any of these negative emotions becomes so kind of like, oh, that's my comfort zone, right? Yeah. Even more in times like we, we, we are experiencing right now. And then we could stay there because it's way more comfortable to stay there than make the effort to get out of there. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's crazy how the comfort zone can be so uncomfortable, yet we're comfortable with the uncomfortable, even though the other side might be the true comfort. Saki. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So during time of crisis, so we were talking about like just the days we didn't want to show up. But what if there's something like we're talking COVID? Like I always now my life is like, was that before COVID or after COVID? That's kind of like a judge of time now for me. I was just talking with a friend about that. But like in this time, there is so many triggers coming at us. So I love this redirect of like, okay, let's not focus on like getting rid of the triggers. Let's focus on what we do with the triggers reaction inside. Right. But during crisis, if we're trying to communicate, like we're talking about for a podcast or in our marketing, how do we not let that crisis drive how do we share it without it being the driving force? Because if we're driving the force with crisis, we're going to collect a lot more of that crisis energy back. So because you're the master of communication and doing all these things, how do we communicate during those times and not collect more crisis? Yeah, that, yeah that's a great question because that's where, and I think you just that, that more redirect right? There is a connection between the emotion and, and the words that we say. Every communication, it has to have an emotion attached to it, right? If we communicate without an emotion, then it's like talking to a robot, right? Or listening to an other book, right? Uh, when you want to communicate effectively, you have to have an emotion that comes behind it. It could be an emotion such as excitement, or it could be an emotion that reflects hope or faith or trust, or I don't know, an emotion that, that basically creates the influence that you want to create in people. For example, if I want to communicate something that makes people feel excited about, my emotion has to be aligned with that goal that I want to achieve. Or if I want to influence 
a group of people in my, with my communication so they feel hopeful for the future, well, then my communication has to have an emotion behind it that is aligned to that we want people to feel. The right question is how do you deal with or how do you communicate when you feel a certain emotion, negative emotion, but the emotion that you want to influence in people or the action that you want to influence in people is, is different, right? It's a positive one. So if let's say that I have fear and I want to move people into action, a lot of leaders, the biggest mistake, and I'm super happy that you shared this because a lot of the leaders or, or managers, let's put it that way, they feel fear because they are not achieving the numbers, for example, in the company. And then they go to their teams and instead of use that fear, like I said before, and convert it into or transform it into communicate, into a determination, right? So the team become together and determined to achieve the goal. Then what the manager does? The, this manager has fear. He goes in front of the team and he says, guys, if we don't make the numbers, they're going to fire us. And now you have 20 people, <laughs> right? With fear. And that, I don't think it's good for productivity, right? No. And that's what most people do, right? When we watch TV or we look at the news or we listen to a lot of managers in companies, they are expressing their fear and moving people using fear to move them. But that doesn't create productivity. That's create drama. That's create chaos. That's create a lot of problems within the organization. And so, so to your question is taking, okay, first think about what is that I want to leave people with, right? What, what is that I want people to feel? I, I have a, a, a belief. I have the belief that I have to leave people in a better emotional state than when I found them, whatever that is. But to me is if today something happened that I see, I felt fear, let's say I have to break as a leader. I have the responsibility as a communicator. I have the responsibility to work on myself first before I open the mic and talk to somebody else. So the first thing that I need to, ch to do is check, do kind of a sound check <laughs> of my mind right? Let's call it thought check to see where my mind is at. What is that I'm thinking? What are those thoughts that are influencing my emotion? Because every, everything that comes, you work something like this. First comes to our mind, right? We see something, we hear something, we thought, we, we think about something and that triggers an emotion. And then the emotion triggers a reaction that most of the time comes in the form of communication, either physical communication with the hands, crying, shooting down, or with the words that we say. So as leaders, as communicators, we need to, to do a, a thought check, an emotional check before we open the mic. And if we see that we are not in the emotional state that we need to be, then have a strategy that help you transform that negative emotion into that positive action that you need so you can serve that person that is waiting to hear your message. And that is our responsibility. Now, we cannot wait somebody else to do it for us. It's not going to happen. There is no, the only superhero that, that you, you can expect to change how you feel or how you think is you. Now, can you put a pause in something negative in your life that is probably draining you, that is making you feel that many things today that, and, and you don't want to be in front of camera or in front of mic? You can pause it. And then if you don't want to do it for yourself, at least do it for those that you have the responsibility to communicate with, either your team 
or your audience in the case of, of the podcast? Yeah. Oh, I'm like that pause for me sometimes, like I shared with you, I'm getting over something. I'm not feeling great. I had to, before I did this, I made sure that I had 30 minutes that I could have sit, relax mm. my voice, clear my, do all the sinus things so that I could show up with my best energy. Is this my highest energy right now? No, but it is that redirect. So it can be something for me when I hear you say this, I'm like, you can take as much time as you want, but sometimes, again, the cure for pod fade is that we don't want you fading away on showing up. So I love that pause, that moment of pause, like, okay, this really sucks what's going on, but I can either tell you're all getting fired or I could take a moment and be like, how can I actually motivate versus I, I just, that analogy opened up so many ways for myself because I'm a team of one over here. Yeah. That's like, okay, well, I can talk to all those inner people that have all those point of views that are running around in my head the same way I could manage a team. Exactly. Exactly. And remember always why you're doing what you're doing. Why you started. Like what made you open the mic the first time and say, hey, everybody, I'm here to, to what? Remember that moment. Because what happened is that when we get into it for too long, sometimes too long could be a month or too long could be years, right? Yeah. We may forget the reason why we decided to do it. And we just need to remember why to then reconnect with a sense of purpose that moves us out of that negative emotion that get us to, that sometimes frees people, right? So, so thinking about what is the re what was that thing that made you say yes? I remember why you do it. I remember those people. Look, when I wrote my book, I remember I hired a higher uh, book coach, which I believe in, co in coaching. I mean, I'm being an executive coach, obviously a business coach. Obviously, I have to believe in coaches, right? So I have coaches for different things in my life. And, and when I wrote my book, I hired a book coach. And I remember one of the first things she told me right before I started writing the book, she said, look, you need to believe that you are writing this book to someone that you know. So she said, find someone that you know that you would like to, to give this message. So I found the person. I told her, okay, the name of this person is this, right? And she said, okay, no, no. Now you find a picture and you're going to put it in front of your, of your computer. So every time that you don't know what to say or what to write or you have doubts or you feel like no writing look at that person and tell me what you will tell her that day that you don't want to write right because now you have a responsibility with somebody else so that gave me a sense of, of purpose i was like okay i have to share everything i know right before my brain shut down with all this amount of emotions and things that I was feeling because all the self-doubts that comes when you put your message out there. So that to me was crucial. So when I do things that I don't have anybody in front of me or anybody that tells me, hey, we need you to do X, Y, Z, and I do it because I want to and because I have a purpose, which is leave a legacy, I always think about someone that I feel responsible to communicate that information that I have to share that day. Oh. I think you just hit like every aspect of where I see a lot of business coaches failing, which is we come up with these avatars mm -hmm. to talk to. 
And it is so hard to create an avatar because it's a fake person. Yes. And I have never had anyone that I've talked to say, think of somebody in your life to talk to. Find a picture of them. This could be anybody. I can think of a couple of clients that I could put on my thing, especially when you're writing a book. What is the name of your book? Just because Maybe, we got it. Yeah, yeah, it's called Success with International Customers. It's, it's about sales. So we'll make sure to get that in the show notes. But I'm like, you said that you wrote a book and I, I got to know what the name of it is. <laughs> you know, that book, I wrote it in 2007, launched it in 2008, uh, 2008. And basically it was done, it had a purpose because it was uh, specifically to help a group of real estate agents that wanted to launch their business internationally. So even though the book can work for any type of business that wants to work internationally, that book specifically was done for the for realtors, for real estate agents. And so what I did is I sent the books to the association, as a National Association of Realtors in the U.S., and they are the ones that sell the book, right? I don't even have, really I have like 10 copies left, but... But I did it for them. It was kind of my gift to the industry. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, okay, well, then we won't put all that information in the show notes. But we just, I'm just finishing my book right now. And it's such a big accomplishment to put it in writing. I thought speaking yeah. was a great way to connect and heal. But writing, there's something special about getting those words on a page. So congratulations for having a book and hiring a book coach. I, in high insight, that probably would have been a good idea. Well, I but we're doing it. Place. And the only way to do it that way was with a coach because the coach told me exactly what to do and how to do it and put my, help, help me organize my thoughts to be able to do it fast. With coaches, you fast track the process. But it could take you five years. With a coach, you take it, what, in a year? Yeah. Yeah. I am a firm, well, I am a coach too, but I am a firm believer in having coaches. And I have a lot of coaches for different areas because I found that the more specific people were, the faster that track went. And it was what captured my attention with everybody is, again, that piece that you're talking about, the way they communicated their story the way that they communicated the emotion that allowed mm -hmm. me to connect with them. So it all comes back to the core message of like, whether you're having a good day, a bad day, a great day, if you want to connect with other humans, you got to communicate. Yeah. Yeah. We have to, and we have to communicate in a way that is proactive. That creates that change that we express, that we say, that we preach in some way, shape, or form, yeah. right? I think most people that are doing podcasting is, is or people that speak in public. Most of us, we are doing it because we want to help people transform in whatever it is that we do, right? I do business, I, other people do other things, right? Health or other things. And I, I, I think what get us all together is in the si same line of thought that we want to create transformation. And, and we have to remember that. So our communication is proactive instead of reactive. You can, you know what? You can create transformation from a reactive conversation too, right? But it's a different, it's not a type of transformation that I think most of us wants to be in business for. Yeah. It just goes back to your idea of you can have the manager that's do this or you're getting fired, or you can have the manager of let's make this fun. Let's try to find some way to motivate mm -hmm. them without, I always tell everybody it's between fear and love. Those are your two choices. Are you going to approach it with fear? Or are you going to approach it with love? Because you can't do it both at the same time. But yeah. they can both accomplish such amazing things on either end of the spectrum. And when you said that, I'm like, yeah, that's right. Like, you're either going to get fired or, <laughs> hey, let's make this a game. The winner will take out to a fancy dinner or whatever. And because everybody gets to keep their job so we can pay for the fancy dinner. <laughs> I yeah. love that perspective. I love that. I just, 
it resonates so deeply, not just because I haven't been in corporate for a while, but it resonates with me too, with my inner thoughts. Okay, how do we want to approach this person that's in my head telling me all these things? One, one of the things that I believe and I use a lot is the personality styles, understanding who I am from my personality style point of view and who I'm speaking with from their personality style. I have heard that people are different, but they, they are predictable different. So I can predict based on the personality style of the person what his or her reaction could be from a conversation or for some, from any trigger or something that happens. And if we understand that we need to com start communicating with people based not on how we want to be communicated, but instead on how they need and they want to be communicated, the world will be so much easier, right? Relationships should be so much e easier. I was sharing a story this morning with this group of people that I was teaching that when I was working in sales, I have about 30 years of experience in sales. When I was working in sales and I moved to the U.S. and I started from scratch in the U.S. 20 years ago, I was closing two clients, two clients out of 10. So I was talking with 10 people and I was closing only two. And once I realized this that I'm telling you that I could use the personality styles to identify what personality style each of my clients has and start talking to them based on what they need and know what I, how I, since we were kids, we were told treat people like you want to be treated. And now we discover, wait, 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 that doesn't work that way. We need to treat people how they need and they want to be treated. So once I start communicating with people the way that they need, needed to receive the, the information or the communication, then my closing ratio went up 10 to, from out of 10 people, eight people would close with me. And it was from, that was the only thing I changed. It was communicating with people intentionally based on their communication style, based on what they need. So there was no confrontation. On the other hand, they felt that I was with them through the process. Yeah. So, and, and if we take this into podcasting or we take this into management, it works the same way. When we are communicating right now, right here, Maybe the people that are listening doesn't, they don't notice specifically what we are doing. But once, once you become an expert communicator, you start communicating to different people at the same time. So you have to be a master on, okay, let me communicate with this personality style for a little bit. Let me communicate with this personality style a little bit. And then your communication get across in a more steady way with most people. Yeah. And I know for me, that was an exercise I did last time I worked in corporate. And it really helped my relationship with my husband also, because he is a person who loves details. So mm -hmm. if you're telling him how to go down the hallway, you better be pointing out every light socket, every picture, everything on the hallway. And when he explains things the way that he likes with all those details, by the first stop that he's got on this hallway, I am like checked out. So he'll get to the end of something. And I was like, I don't even know what you said, because I don't process all that information. I need the shortcut. I need the cliff note version. So we've been working on flipping that script where I give him more details and mm -hmm. he gives me way less details and it's made stuff so much better. So I, I agree. How did you get people to take these, these person, did they just tell you these personalities or have you just that, like you said, become a master of being able to weave it in. Right. No, no. I study something called DISC. I don't know if you have heard about DISC. Uh, DISC was created by William Mas Marston, which is, this is the same guy that created the lie detector, by the way. And this was created oh. in the 1920s. And it's funny because for years... Nobody pay attention too much into this, but 
in the, I think it was in the 40s, 40s, 50s, that a group of psychologists took it, took his work and brought them into to the companies. And they started using it for companies to hire people, right? And if you are in, in your house and you look around, you will see a lot of things in your house that most likely those companies use DISC to recruit the, the, the employees to work on those companies. Now, this has been around for, for quite some time. Now, I never use DISC to recruit. I use DISC. No, the first time that I used it was about 20 years ago, 28 years ago. And I became certified because I wanted to understand more about me, why I was feeling what I was feeling, why I was reacting, how I was reacting and so on. So I did it for me. Then when I moved to the U.S. and I started failing in sales, which is one of my biggest strengths, I was like, okay, something is going on. So I went back to, to, to the basics. I went back to, to this to see what was going on with me. And then I started realizing, wait, I have to see this from the perspective of the client. And I started seeing, okay, so assuming that the client was this personality style, this is what happened with him or her. And that's why they didn't buy from me. And, and then I started taking those pieces and put it into my sales process. So now my, conversations, my text messages, my emails, my marketing campaigns, all of it was going out with, with the disc in mind. And nowadays I, I became a recertified a few years ago and I'm teaching. I don't know if you're familiar with John Maxwell. Mm -mm. John Maxwell is one of the top leaders on leadership. He has over a hundred books on leadership. And communication. Wow. So I work with him and I, his faculty member for DISC and sales for the Spanish platform. So for all the clients that comes from Spanish speaking countries. So what, with that being said, I am practicing every single day, right? I'm teaching every week on, on how to use this into the sales process, how to use this into the communication process. And I became not only a fan, but also uh, an expert on detecting the personality styles of the people that I'm, I'm talking with. And I became very aware that when we have conversations, we need to make sure to do it in a way that the other person will process the information in the best way possible. Because the truth is, the, is that when we communicate, we are responsible for if, if the communication get across or not, right? So if I'm sharing something with someone and that person say, well, I didn't get what you're saying, right? Or I'm asking something for that, for someone to do. And the person didn't understand what I meant. It's not their fault. It's mine, right? It's me, the one that has a power in, in, in change how I communicate because I have the information. Right. So when we communicate, we are responsible to communicate effectively. And that comes to me is one of the biggest things that I teach in all the, or my, the communication trainings that I do. I infuse them with everybody goes through the assessments and, and we do it specifically the assessment for communication. So, so we can see how that person communicates, what triggers them, what their strengths are in their communication process, then also we, we let them become aware of what personality style the other person has so they can communicate more effectively. So it's an art. I would say, yeah, it has a big science for it, but also it's an art. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we mentioned the creativity portion in the beginning. And I think that there is so much creativity when it comes to communication. And I, I believe that's a type of communicate or creativity that mm -hmm. everyone can tap into if they spend yes. a little bit of time doing that. Yes. And then you know what? A lot of people, they do this in a more natural way. And imagine if you're a great communicator doing it in a natural way, imagine 
how much more you can do or be as a communicator if you intentionally take your way of communicating and you work in a way that you are aware of your emotional intelligence, that you understand how to transform your emotional, your negative emotions into positive action, that you are aware of the personality styles and so on. Yeah. Intentional action, I think, is the key to everything, is that intention behind yes. everything you do, everything you say. And that's one of the cures right there for the pod fade is your your intention. What is your intention with your show? Just like mm-hmm. I was saying in the beginning, the show got strategic. I'm not a strat. I mean, like I'm good at strategy, but that's not where my heart is. So it's all about finding that balance. And I just I love that. So if you could add any ingredient, I call them mm-hmm. ingredients and the cure for pod fade. What would you want to add into the big old Kira that we're creating here. If I could add an ingredient, I was saying the emotional intelligence part is important because we are living in a world that is like a pressure cooker, right? Did I say it right? I'm sorry for yes. my spine. But it's oh no, it's a it's cooker. It's... And, I, and I believe that now more than ever, we need to understand our own emotions and we need to understand how, how to work through them. I'm not saying get rid of the emotion. No, no, no. Use that emotion that you're feeling to create something magnificent. So if I could have, if I can choose one ingredient, I think that is something that everyone should have in their, in their tool. In how you say toolbox? Yep. Self-awareness is a big, big, big thing. Yeah. And I love that analogy of the pressure cooker because that's what I feel like sometimes. I feel like sometimes you could just like barely, if I touch this, it's going to explode on me. Like I better just be aware of how I'm reacting in this crazy planet that we're living on right now. Yes. Yes. And we all the social media pressure that we have too because now, okay, so, so you have to be that's what they say, right? The marketing people. You have to be here. You have to air be here. quotes here. Yeah, right. Exactly. And then now we have a new social media platform. And, and I'm like thinking, I spent the, the first day like three hours and my eyes were like bleeding afterwards. And I'm like, what am I doing? This doesn't make sense to me at all. So we have become some kind of, we've been pulled to to follow a bunch of stuff that doesn't serve, I think. All these social media conversations, I mean, sometimes it's cool, it's fun. You need to take it into consideration when you're thinking about your work and the things that you're doing because it's it's a way to communicate to the world. But I will say we have to be very careful to not allow the social media to really take our life or a bunch of our time and then we turn around and we look at our life and we're like wait it feels like i've been three years with my head inside my phone right so so yeah yeah i i totally agree that's why i love this platform is that i really get to have the conversations that i want to have because i feel like social media is it's kind of lost the social air quote, social aspect of it is what it feels like. There's some platforms I still feel that you can be very social on, but I feel like so much of it is look at me. I'm not going to engage. There's just, I I think it goes back to what you said is that intention. You have to approach everything with intention. And if being on every platform drains that energy and makes you frustrated, angry, I had to give it up for a while because I gave up the news, but it was all over social media. So it was, it's counterintuitive. It's like, I don't want to see this, but this is all I'm seeing. So it's all about that intention that you mentioned. And I just, I'm going to keep going back to that because it's true. Totally. Totally. (laughs) Oh, I've just loved this conversation. 
So if somebody's looking to hang out with you, where can they find you? Well, speaking of social media, <laughs> they can find me on I'm in LinkedIn. I am also in Instagram. You can find me on both through Valeria Grunbaum. And if you speak Spanish, you can find me also on Instagram on Elevando Tu Capacidad. And then... If you want to check out my website, uh, it's valeriainleadership.com. I will make sure to have all your information in the show notes because we Thank like you. easy peasy lemon squeezy here where you can click and go. Very good. I like it. <laughs> I do too. Well, thank you again so much for this conversation. I think this is really like one of those gaps that's in Podfade that we have talked about with going back to your why, doing things with intention and showing up when you don't feel like showing up with intention. We're going to keep going back to that with intention. So thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us today. I am so grateful. Thanks for the invitation. <laughs>